PC industry wise, there there wasn't much. Like, uh, I mean, AMD launched new AM4 processors, which I think is pretty cool. Um, I got a little bit of inside baseball into sort of where these are coming from, which I don't think was off the record, but it felt like too much detail for the video. Um, so the 5800X 3D, they've been producing for a couple of years now, right? And in that time, they've had a lot of dies that uh, die, <laughs> yeah, not die, but didn't quite make the grade yeah. for 5800X 3D. Yeah. So why do we have a cheaper X3D? Because, uh, hey, I mean, waste not, want not, right? So 250 bucks gets you a chip that doesn't hit the same clock speeds, but AMD is claiming, though we haven't validated this yet, that a lot of what gives the X3D its strength is the cache itself, is the, is the latency advantage of the cache, and you don't necessarily need more core clock speed for that. So they're saying that gaming performance should actually be quite similar to the 5800X3D. So I'm, I'm pretty excited for that because there's this enormous install base of AM4 systems out there. Mm -hmm. And if all they've got to do to be able to keep up with the latest generation gaming GPUs, mostly, right? Like, okay, not quite as good as a 7000 series or a X3D 7000 series for that matter or a 14th gen or whatever. But to mostly keep up with a current gen GPU is pop a $250 chip in there. They're going to get some money back for the chip they just took out. Just flip it on eBay or whatever else. That's really compelling. And I, I, I'm here for it. I like to see it. Uh, I just thought it was really cool that we were seeing extra support for that platform. I mean, realistically, AMD's main focus was their 8000G series chips, which are pretty much 7000 chips but the top two have like a neural processor on neural processing unit in them that AMD didn't really have any clear idea of what anyone was going to do with yet like there's no real software that runs on it at this time that 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 a general consumer would care about uh, but theoretically you know workloads will come and it's much more efficient to offload to that compared to even using the GPU on them. And it's the GPU that's really special because they had demos. Obviously, they were using frame generation and upscaling and all that kind of stuff. But they had demos where they were running AAA games at like 60 frames per second, like Baldur's Gate 3 running on an, on integrated graphics. That's actually pretty nuts. I, 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 you know, back when we first started putting... GPUs right on the CPU package, you know, back when Intel first launched uh, their like 700 series core processors, um, Linfield. I was like, yo, I don't want this. Give me more CPU compute. Why are you wasting die space on this crap? Now I'm, I, now I get it. If we, if I'd known that this level of integration was going to give us AAA gaming, yeah, at low, you know, 1080p, if you're lucky, right? It's running at a lower resolution, upscaling to 1080p. Um, but if I'd known integrated graphics was going to reach playing AAA games at all, I probably would have been a lot more on board with it. It's freaking awesome. And it finally buries that category that you and I have both been trying to kill for the last 10 years, the entry-level e-waste graphics card. Yeah. I get it. And okay? it's, been, it's been close. Some people buy them. I get it. But like please. Please stop. Please stop. Please stop. Onboard graphics is literally a better option. And okay, sometimes you have an older machine that you need to put better graphics in. I get it. Don't buy an entry level card. Buy used. Get 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 a used card that you could also just plug into it and would also be cheap. Okay? Don't. Just stop. Ah! <laughs> oh, man. Oh, boy. Here comes chat. Oh, no. I have a GT510. Okay. All right. All oh, right, no. All right. Really? I use an entry-level card to prop up my 4090. It's a great <laughs> seg pillar. <laughs> <laughs> I like my computer to be an analog for society. <laughs> look, 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 look. Raging Azaru. 1660 Super is not the problem. I've never had an issue with that. Mm -hmm. I'm talking like GT 1030s. Yeah. Stuff that is just manufactured waste. Um, yep, yep, yep. Why don't we jump into... Oh, here, hold on. Notable non-AI. Okay, I already talked about Wi-Fi 7 being amazing. There's the new AMD card with 16 gigs of VRAM. I can't, man... <sighs> NVIDIA's lineup, once again, seems to be just 
purely designed to upsell you to the next one. I talked about this a fair bit when they launched the 4060 series, right? You've got the 4060 um, 8 gig, the 4060 16 gig, and the 4060 Ti, I think it is, or is it the, no, the 4060 and then the Ti both had 8 gigs, and then the 4060 Ti 8 gig, or 16 gig, that's right, where the 4060 was like dog slow, and then the Ti was fast enough, but didn't have enough VRAM, and then the Ti 16 gig was way overpriced, you know, like it was just like, the entire lineup is just designed to extract more money from you. It's like it's, yeah. it's like so blatantly obvious. They just won't they won't quite give you enough at every stage. Like it used to be, you could get kind of you know what was pretty much the whole experience, um, and like you could overclock it a bit, and you could like get to that level. Like they they are so careful to make sure that that one cannot be as good as that one, and you are leaving something critical on the table. And I felt the same way with the 4070 Super, 4080s, uh, excuse me, 4070 Super, 4070 Ti Super, and 4080 Super lineup. The 4070 Super has 12 gigs of VRAM. It is a six hundred dollar card. <laughs> with 12 gigs and i get it it has a 192 bit bus so if they wanted to strap more ram to it they would either have to do some kind of like uh, you know some of it would run at half of the bandwidth or something or they would have to double it entirely they'd have to do 24 gigs of vram we've or had wider like buses that. for a long time though well that's what i was gonna say is uh <laughs> i mean you could also make the argument that it is a 600 dollars yeah. card <laughs> with a 192 bit bus that is equal would be equally outrageous yeah not that so very long ago yeah um <clears throat> Then you step up to the 4070 Ti Super, which has 16 gigs of VRAM, which is nice, but is an $800 graphics card. Then there's the 4080 Super, which is a great 4K high frame rate gaming card. I was playing the new, um, the new Call of Duty, Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Can, can we just <laughs> Again, not, again, again, again? Can we not name things like this? I <laughs> freaking hate it um so i played the new call of duty modern warfare and even without upscaling nonsense it was i shouldn't say nonsense because it's getting really good even without upscaling it was over 100 fps at 4k like it looked great it just looked great and with all the tomfoolery it was like over 200 Sure. Like like 220, 230, 240, like somewhere in that range. Um, so I was playing that on the 4080, which is 4080 Super, excuse me, which was awesome. And it got a $200 price cut from 1200 US dollars. <laughs> so the one kind of reasonably priced one, it's like, well, hey, look at that Achilles tendon right there. You know, um, don't no, don't worry about the knife. Just here, give me your foot. Give me your foot. You know, right, because we're, we're in the era where the PS5 and the Xbox series have 16 gigs of potential available RAM. And so it's no secret that game developers are going to be trying to utilize that as efficiently as possible. So there's the, there's the potential for games to need that kind of VRAM, um, especially if you're on PC where you're going to be running at a higher detail level than what is necessarily going to be available to a console that's running what is essentially last-gen GPU technology now. So even if those consoles can't dedicate their entire 16 gigs, because it's shared, right, to VRAM, on a PC, it, it is very clear that, that, is gonna, that those kinds of overruns are going to happen, and they have already been happening. Yeah. So they, they released this card for $600 that is not designed to last for this generation properly. Um, and then it's you know it's eight hundred bucks to get one, but by the time you're spending eight hundred dollars, well I don't know. I guess you might as well get the thousand dollar one. They can do four K hundred twenty. I don't. <laughs> and I'm supposed to feel like this is a good deal because the non super was twelve hundred. I. It's tough. He's he's he wants an out. That's why he started searching for things on the table. He doesn't like the situation 